Hello friends, welcome to the Legion Raid guide series featuring Thea Mine. This guide would not have been possible without the support of my community. They will all be listed at the back of this video on the credits. With that, let's get started right away. Thea Mine has 3 gates on normal, 4 gates on hard. They can be entered at 1610 and 1630 eye level. Gate 1 and 2 are fairly comfortable, but 3 and 4 are very difficult. Upon beating the gates, you receive Dark Fire, a material needed to transcend your armors. Auction items in the raid are a little bit different. It's basically a token item to retry your Transcend minigames. The first level is where the clear race is held. Eye level 1630 is the requirement, and you need to clear hard mold first. This is a 2 gate roster based raid with 1 time clear rewards. Gate 2 Valinarch is a demon type boss with 180 HP bars with 3 phases. The raid has a unique traveling mechanic with lots of fall depths. Make sure to bring your sacred charm. I personally recommend splendid charms because there's a lot of lightning stunts. Other battle items like one set of frost grenade and scarecrows are situationally good as well. Getting hit by any of his black mud-like attacks will give you weakness stacks. They stack infinitely and you take more damage as it increases. Getting stunned while having these stacks will cause a bubble explosion around you. This is a near kill damage if you have high stack of more than 3. So if you have high stacks, you're like a walking death bomb. During his human form, most of his lightning patterns are x-shaped. He also has a grab pattern, ref pattern that gives stacks, jump to spawning snakes, lightning waves, and teleport to grab. The teleport to grab spawns many stun lightning then appear on the first person he sees before he disappears. His patterns are very very straightforward but very difficult to dodge if an aggro person rotate his head. For example, for lightning waves, he does it twice so if you're the aggro you might want to hold his head position so that other people don't get hit. At 152 lines, only on hard mode, he will teleport to the middle and destroy half the stage. Fall death is possible if you get hit by the yellow patterns or black waves. His grab attacks are also counters if someone is grabbed. He may throw you off the map if failed. After 3 or 4 normal patterns, a dragon will appear either on the wall or the falling edge. If he appears on the falling edge, he will spawn a series of snakes as waves. These do stack damage and they hurt too. If the dragon appears on the walls though, black waves will spawn and this can knock you off the edge. This pattern kills a lot of people, so make sure to be ready for it. At 134 lines, he will jump away and destroy both sides of the stage, leaving a bridge in the center. Make sure to group up and dodge the lightning above your head together. Boss will shoot 7 energy balls that need to be countered per person. If you also successfully counter one, after 3 seconds, you will be frozen in place and spawn a yearning sized electric field. You need to scatter out after your counters to make sure it doesn't hinder other players. People usually stand in a U shape starting from the top left corner. When all 7 energy balls are countered, the 8th person will need to counter the boss. He sometimes glows red as a fake counter. Make sure to focus to not get baited by him. After everything is done, make sure to group up below to dodge the lightning above your head together and don't get hit by the, any of the explosions. When the boss's transformation is complete, you can counter him again or he will charge everyone against the wall. Team needs to destroy the rock wall and proceed to run to the next stage. Two random players will have a stunned lightning falling down their head. The boss will fly across one of these split paths. You can simply time your spacebar or use tenacity skills. Quickly group up here, because the boss will appear either left or right side to be countered. If he appears on the left side though, he has a chance to bait everyone with the red fake counter. So make sure to check first before countering. At the 90 degree turn path, there will be a series of stun lightnings or black pools that can also root you in place. A lot of people get stunned here, so you can rely on Bard's Guardian Tune or pre-use Splendid Sacred Charm to be immune to stunts to easily cross this path. Please make sure to not leave anyone behind. These white textures mean the platform is going to disappear soon. Even misclicking on the disappeared bridges will cause fall death. If you pass the first bridge, the boss will counter either top or bottom of the bridge. There are also a bunch of adds that could potentially hinder your counter, so be careful not to go ahead alone unless you're very confident with your counters. After another set of 6 adds, the boss will either counter at top or appear at the top side and vacuum everyone nearby for a stagger check. Be ready to use your space bar or simply walk away if you see it appear at the top. Nobody being grabbed is very good. Next counter will be right before the bridge split off. If he appears at the top, there is also a chance to be a fake red counter, so be careful. After crossing another bridge, all regular DPS players should stay all the way to the right. The large 3 adds will explode and sometimes knock you up to the left side for a fall death. Gunlancers and supports can aggro these guys and tank the explosions by DRs and shields. 
destroy the debris and proceed to the top. There will be one more counter on the left or the right. Make sure to keep an eye on the stun lightnings and black explosions. And when you successfully cross all the bridges there, stand right here. Hard mode has two sets of explosions, normal has one, and this spot is a safe spot for both variations. You'll be fighting the dragon form of the boss here for a bit. All yellow warning attacks at this point can lead to fall death. After 4 to 5 normal patterns or 30 to 40 seconds, you can use hidden Azena here for a big DPS push. The sidereal timing is when he spreads his wings and roars. Make sure to stand in the front or the back position to not get flown away. If Sidereal is used at the wrong timing, or failed to counter 3 times getting here, you must dodge his finishing pattern, which is outside safe. After the big push, destroy the debris and proceed to the next stage. You don't need to group up here, so you can go as fast as you want. For safety, always dodge the yellow lasers first while running up, because the fog at the back is going to take a while to catch up. For hard mode, the boss will also appear for a counter, but it's smart to ignore them. Fast classes tend to run ahead and counter the boss. If the boss isn't countered on time, he will shoot a long laser that can knock people out too, so always be on guard, you can dodge this very easily. The boss at this stake can also cast a fake counter too. When we arrive, phase 2 starts here. Don't go to the center though, you could get hit by his yellow attack and get knocked off the stage from the start. From here, there are a few time based patterns. Blackpool spawn. You will see him cast multiple tornadoes around him, with black bubble popping out of his head. When debuff Darkness Mucus icon finishes, the black pool will spawn under your feet. This is given to the farthest 4 people from the boss periodically. It is very crucial to keep track of your debuff bar, because it's very hard to tell if you have it or not. Standing on top of the pool slows you down and damages you. If placed them too close to each other, it will turn into a larger pool. If you have 8 or more of these pools on the stage, it's an automatic wipe. I recommend placing them relatively close to each other at the top or the bottom side of the map. Lurker. If you don't push DPS fast enough, you will see this pattern after Blackpool spawns. Boss will place his claws firmly to the ground and slam three times. You have to keep moving because three explosions will happen under your feet. People will be placing new pools, but the last red circle slam will remove any pools that are hit. Place it just outside the ring to delete the pool but does the red circle impact too. Pools explode when they get deleted and it does death damage. If larger pools get deleted, the explosion itself is map wide. White Orbs. Boss will teleport to the center and fly in place. One person will be aggroed and then proceed to spawn white orbs around him. These white orbs will follow the nearest player slowly and explode on impact. They can delete pools if you overlap them. The judgment is very forgiving to a point where you can delete two or more pools too. Aggro person should always stand either 6 or 12 o'clock to hold the head position because he will do a large side wing attack when he's about to finish the pattern. Fly away to slam. This is only in hard mode. The camera will zoom out and prepare to land. Stand directly under him. The safe spot on impact is a cone shape behind him. Supports need to make sure to give proper DR and shields just in case of any accidents. At 72 bars, Dairain will have a dialogue and boss will teleport to the center. He will glow either black or white. You will need to send the opposite color orbs to his body like billiards. Make sure you angle them properly and stand still on impact. There will also be one random person aggro too. He will fire a laser that can knock the players out and blow up any orbs hit. A lot of people die from this. The aggro player needs to focus and stand nowhere near the orbs. You can also hit the same color orbs away from the boss to prevent unfortunate accidents. It's a good use of your free time. If few orbs are missed, you will need to manually stagger the rest, then he will transform again to phase 3. All time based patterns will keep happening with one more additional pattern. He will slowly fly away with a map wide center safe warning sign. The red sign will turn into black water slowly fading outwards. Then he will land to create an octagon shaped lightning walls. Three explosions under your feet will also happen. Six of the lightning walls will disappear and a black wave from the center will spawn. You need to stand behind the correct lightning wall to take cover or use time stop to survive the wave. You can either stay inside or outside to prepare to take cover. At 18 bars, the boss will start his final mechanic. If you happen to get a full sidereal meter before 18 bars, don't hesitate to use it for some DPS push. You can recover it back during this mech. The boss will disappear with the Zenith dialogue. There will be total 3 waves of ads. You will need to kill all of them in about 1 minute 10 seconds. All black pools at this point will get bigger as well. First wave is 8 small ads. Gather them up and kill them with AoE skills. Second wave is 4 medium sized ads. They often do pizza attacks that can knock you down. 
This wave is where most time is wasted. Apply dark grenades on as many as you can to kill them quickly. Frost grenades are also used here to freeze them for an easier kill. Final wave is two dragons spawning opposite sides. One of them will proceed to counter. Do not counter this and wait until the countering one charges to the center. Go behind the charged one and use Thyrain to hit both dragons to kill one and leave one with small health. You will need to keep paying attention to the lightning suns and the boss going across the map. Support and Gunlancer Awakening should be used at the second or third wave because it has the most accidents. If you succeed this mechanic, he will be stunned and you need to drop his HP to zero bars from that point. He won't do any black pool spawns, but his jump attacks are deadly due to outside ring being dangerous. Gate 2's most death situations are from not taking care of Dark Mucus debuff into Explosion. Majority of his normal patterns are not lethal, but there are some mentionable ones. Double Scratch He will cast a large yellow pizza. After his first one, he will always cast another one. So prepare your tenacity skills and space bars if you see the first one. There are distinguishable sound cues for this pattern too. Slow Counter He will smash the ground and scratch across. If he rotates his head, it's a follow-up laser attack. If he does not rotate his head, it's a counter. And a counter one is a little bit slower than the laser one too. Fast Counter He will always do this counter at the early stage of phase 2. He sometimes turns his head very quickly and proceeds to counter. If failed, he will grab someone for a large circle explosion. Lightning Shotgun he will fire a ray of lightning in front of him as a cone. The residue stays for a while and it can keep stun you. So when you see this, you need to stay away from his front. There are also stun lightnings and dark missions at static points in the map. This is quite annoying, so there are no choice than keeping in mind these positions being dangerous periodically. Lastly, here are some additional tips. G2 of Theomine is much easier if people are aware of black pools and their weakness debuffs. If the stack is high, the explosion kills you and everyone around it. So you have to make sure that if you have high stacks, you must focus on not getting stunned and let the debuff run out. Fall deaths happen very often as well, ranging from regular yellow patterns, black wave patterns on both human and dragon form. Focus on studying the key patterns that kills most players. The faster you push DPS, the better. Make sure buffs and darks are in place for hidden is in a push and Dark Relay when Phase 2 starts to see minimal pool-related patterns. Sidereal timings are set in place, one at Hidden Azina, and you can use it one more time before 18 bars, and using Esther Thyrain at the final wave of two dragons. Afterwards, you can use whatever you want to finish the boss off. With that, that concludes G2 of Theomine. Remember to focus on executing the important mechs, avoid fall deaths, and be aware of your weakness debuffs, and then Gate 2 will be very comfortable for you. Good luck everyone and thank you for all your support. Bye-bye.